Hey. So I want to talk a little bit about church and the fact that I'm tempted to walk into one here in Los Angeles just to see what's going on. Although, frankly, naturally, I'd much rather go to a black gospel church. And that's somewhere else in town from where I am at the moment. But there is a big Methodist church just up the block here. And I am curious because what am I going to notice that's different, if anything, from the same kind of large Methodist church in Norman, Oklahoma? I'm, I, I don't really uh, believe, you see. So, and being up on Sunday morning... I mean, like, I think my body, I had about five and a half hours of sleep, and then I think my body said, you've had enough sleep, but you're just, um, your, your back hurts. You're going to need to take more extreme yoga measures or something like yoga stretching. So you're going to have to do things differently from now on. Uh, and that's fine. It's just a little bit of a, a old man thing, you know, old person thing. But anyway, I've been thinking about that. I, I just think maybe, um, I just want to see how people socialize in one of the largest metropolises in the world in a church versus how they do in a suburb in middle America. I don't know. I'm just curious. Well, anyway, <clears throat> that's one thing. And the other thing is, Chaz Palminteri, he's, a, he's been an inspiration to me the last few months. Even though I know there's very little similarity between what he did and what I'm wanting to do. But there's things that I just think about when, and I think maybe some of you creative types can understand what I'm talking about. Uh, Chaz says... You have to, if you're going to write something, you kind of have to have a schedule. Say you're going to write for four hours a day from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. <clears throat> and that would be great. And I thought that I could try to do something like that. But until you get settled in a place, and until you've got a day job that has certain generally unswerving hours, or unfluctuating, then... You got to catch as catch can with the creativity, and sometimes you're too physically tired to put pencil to paper, even if you have mind to, or you don't have mind to. But here's what happens with me. See, here's what's it's funny. It's like I did, ev I've done everything almost the opposite of what Chaz recommends, but it's not that I'm not doing the same things, and I want. I want to affirm that <laughs> look, in May, I had the opportunity to write however much I wanted during the day. Usually I would write for no more than about a half an hour to an hour at a stretch and put it down, maybe come back to it in another hour. And it was, but it was three weeks of a lot. And so I've shown you the, the spiral notebooks and stuff. <clears throat> um, and I didn't know how much I had, but I have at least 45 minutes worth of stuff, whether it's all as good as another issue and whether uh, all of it's finished is an issue too. You know, uh, how it's delivered, the timing can fluctuate uh, by a long period of time, 10 seconds or more. But the thing is, I, I had it in me to write and I did. And then I knew there was going to come a time I was going to have to organize it all later. But that I might not be able to write for a while. I couldn't when I was leaving town. It was an extremely difficult process. It's still not over. Um, but that aside, uh, it feels like I've done it differently. As far as now I'm putting together what I already wrote. I'm not writing really very much right now. I'm actually collating or organizing or editing. And that's fine. And performing is part of that process or 
all those other things are part of the performing process or however you want to look at it, I guess. But it just, it just seems like, um, I had the opportunity that blessed opportunity of about three weeks to engage with my manic creativity and my mother with whom I lived knew I was writing, but I didn't expect, what it was because I don't think she was gonna like it and she indeed I don't think she does like most of what I'm doing now um, it hit or miss she likes a few like maybe 10 15 percent of it but but the point is here's Chaz Palminteri a role model for me creative speak creatively speaking yet I couldn't do it in a <laughs> regimented disciplined way i had to do it in a i've got this wild opportunity i'm going to take it and i'm doing it a little bit in secret and then now if i hadn't done that suppose i'd said i know i can't i can't write here i couldn't after that three weeks period though because you know then then the conversation with my mom occurred where it was like what do you really well she didn't ask me, what have you really been doing? I came to her and said, you want to know what I've really been doing? Here it is. And uh, though she didn't ask, but it was sort of like, I thought it was incumbent upon me to tell her. Anyway. Um, but I'm just, I just want, a <laughs> part of me does want to go, Mr. Palminteri, what do you say about how I've done this thing now? Like you had, it took you a while and you workshopped it and you did it piecemeal by piecemeal, five minute monologue by five minute monologue until you, after a while you had a 90 minute one man show, a Bronx tale. But here I am and I wrote about an hour's worth of stuff in three weeks. <laughs> And now I got to try to figure out what it is. <laughs> and, and I'm trying not to uh, lose all my money, trying to get a day, a little day job, some kind of dispensary. I don't know. I can't be a bouncer. I don't have the back for it, man. But anyway, uh, it just, it just, I, I, I don't know why I feel like I want to say Mr. Palminteri. Tell me I'm not crazy for trying to do it at all. Like, it ends up that I can't hold to that kind of schedule due to circumstances. And suppose they get even more rough for me. Because right now, I'm incredibly lucky at the circumstance I've got here in Los Angeles for about 10 days. It's amazing. But after that, who the fuck knows? So, um, Mr. Palminteri's had radiator trouble <laughs> with his guy, you know, in the course of doing business and before uh, or during the process of being offered money. And then he still had to turn it down because they wouldn't let him play Sonny or write the screenplay as he knew he would need to do. So that's another great thing that I really love is, is like he held to his guns in a way that's not hostile at all. It's just, this is, I'm, I'm going to be, this is how I'm going to do this creatively. And it's not going to be some other bastardized way. So that's a role model too. <laughs> Peace out for now.